Hi, my name is Bupinder Singh Farmaha and I am working as a postdoctoral research associate in Department of Agronomy at UNL. Today I will be visiting with you about nitrogen fertilizer and water use in irrigated corn in Nebraska. I want to acknowledge co-author of this presentation, Dr. Patricio Grassini. And we also want to acknowledge the support we are getting from University of Nebraska Lincoln Water for Food Institute, Nebraska Corn Board and different natural resource district. Let's first talk about why nitrogen fertilizer and irrigation water are two important parameters for corn. In this slide, I am showing two different graphs. On the left graph, I am showing uh, red dots and it has a relationship between corn yield and crop, water, crop nitrogen uptake on the x-axis. And it explains that the corn yield increase with the increase of crop nitrogen uptake and that relationship is curvilinear in nature. On the second, <coughs> Second graph uh, on this presentation, I am showing uh, corn yield on the y-axis and crop water use on the x-axis. And there are yellow dot that represent rain-fed field, blue dot that's representing the irrigated field. And we can see that the corn yield increases linearly with the increase of crop water use. And <clears throat> so the bottom line from these two graphs is that in order to achieve high corn yield, crop has to absorb lot of water and nitrogen and that that requirement need to be met through the nitrogen fertilizer and the irrigation but the challenge is that how to meet that demand without making any environmental impact in the few slides next few slides i will be uh, showing some trends about the corn yield nitrogen fertilizer and use efficiencies and these are historical trends from 1965 to 2010 and data for these slides have been collected from National Agency USDNS. In the first slide, I am showing uh, yellow dots for the rain-fed field and blue dots for the irrigated field. On the y-axis, we have corn yield and on the x-axis, time scale. And we can see that in 1965, farmers were achieving irrigated corn yield around 100 bushels per acre and now in the 2010, they are achieving around 200 bushels per acre. On the rain-fed side, farmers were achieving around 50 bushels per acre. Now they are achieving around 100 plus bushels per acre. So what happens that over the time that there is an annual increase rate and this increase has been, hap this increase has happened linearly over time. Now let's take a look what happened during the same time frame about the nitrogen fertilizer. Use. And it is surprising that from 1968 onward, there is nitrogen fertilizer rates are quite stable. And average nitrogen fertilizer rate is 138 pound nitrogen per acre. Uh, it means that farmers have increased corn yield over time, but without any significant increase in nitrogen fertilizer rates. It means that there is an increase in the nitrogen use efficiency over time. And nitrogen use efficiency is calculated as corn yield per unit of nitrogen fertilizer applied. Uh, we can see on the x-axis, this is bushels produced per pound of nitrogen fertilizer applied. And on the x-axis, this is the time scale. We, ha we can see that the nitrogen fertilizer use efficiency has increased linearly over time from 0.6 bushels per pound of nitrogen from mid 60s to 2010 up to 1.1 bushels per pound. Okay, now let's take a look on the water use efficiency. Water use efficiency is calculated as the corn yield produced per unit of the water applied during the season and that water use I am counting for irrigation as well as rainfall received from May to August. And we can see that from this chart that water use efficiency have increased linearly for the rain-fed field as well as for the irrigated field over time. So increase in the water and nitrogen use efficiency over time and higher yield have been possible because of the better, current, better crop management practices, better new hybrid crop rotations, conservation tillage, earlier planting date and many more factors. Uh, we were so far discussing about the trends at the state level from the national data set. Now I want to take a look at, dif at different regions within Nebraska. But before describing that, I want to tell about the natural resource district, nat uh, natural resource district. Just few years ago, my group have collaborated with the different natural resource district to collect data from different 
farmers field and those farmers field were several thousand and they have supplied data on field specific corn yield, uh, nitrogen fertilizer rate applied and uh, how about the irrigation amount were applied and the in nitrate in irrigation water and the soil nitrate residual levels. Uh, we are here focusing only on six different region over six uh, time uh, over six growing season from 2006 to onward and uh, I will describe a little bit about these six different regions. These six different regions are distinct in the terms of uh, they are explaining uh, variability in the current management practices, soils and weather for the major corn production region within the Nebraska. On the eastern side of the Nebraska we can see that uh, there is a high variable soil texture in northeast while in the southeast there is loamy silt clay loam texture. Uh, while in northeast there is 100% irrigation system under pivot and 50% pivot system in southeast and while 50 other percent are under surface applied irrigation. In the central part of Nebraska northeast we have 100% pivot irrigation system and uh, soils are loamy to sandy loamy sand soil texture in nature. In central Platte valley we have high variability in soil texture while in the south central soils are quite homogeneous and the it is soil silt loam texture. We can also see that there is a precipitation gradient from east to west. We are we can notice here 27 to 25 inches of uh, precipitation in uh, in one year here 21 to 23. So there is not much variation between regions in central plat. But when you look across east to west, there is a gradient. And now let us take a look on the western region where precipitation is only 9 inches and all the irrigation is applied through the pivot irrigation system. Now I want to show uh, how these six different regions are different in terms of the corn yield produced and nitrogen and fertilizer use efficiencies. In northeast farmers are Farmers during 2006 to 11, they achieved 197 bushels per acre and in southeast 185. But look at the irrigation amount applied, only 7.6 inches and here 8.7 inches. Uh, in the central part, they are achieving 197 bushels per acre for north central, central Platte Valley 180 bushels per acre and in south central 207 bushels per acre. But there is a huge variability in the irrigation amount, 9 inches. 11 inches and 13 inches irrigation amount applied and that also resulted in variation in irrigation water use efficiency while in western part we have 160 bushel that and irrigation amount is 18 inches so western part farmers were achieving relatively lower corn yield by applying high but they have to apply lot of irrigation and that resulted into lower irrigation water use efficiency. We also noticed that in Central Platte Valley, the irrigation water use efficiency is far less. And one of the reasons that irrigation water use efficiency is low because uh, there are more irrigation system under surface applied than to pivot. And that related to the so variability in the surface texture. Uh, and this variation, uh, among region is related to east to west gradient in precipitation, also evapotranspiration and some part related to the soil texture also. Uh, what one thing is noticeable that in all these regions farmers were achieving high corn yield compared to the national average of 150 bushels per acre. Now let us take a look about the nitrogen fertilizer use and nitrogen use efficiencies. We can see in the eastern side of eastern side of the Nebraska farmers are applying around 180 pound nitrogen per acre. In central part of the Nebraska they were uh, they were applying 180 in north central 160 pound in central Platte Valley and south central 177 pound nitrogen per acre. And in the western part they are applying 149 pound nitrogen per acre. And, uh, <clears throat> but one thing is quite noticeable that um, on all these regions that farmers are achieving high corn yield though they are applying more nitrogen than the national average of 130 pound but they are able to do that at achieving and maintaining high nitrogen use efficiency. When we take a look at the national average that's 1.1 bushels per pound 
while in all these regions these are fairly close to the nitrogen use efficiency of the nation. So it means that farmers are very uh, efficient in the use of the nitrogen in Nebraska compared to the other part of the corn production in USA. So these were the things I was explaining. First we discussed about uh, historical trends over time using national database. Then I explained how using na uh, natural source, resource district database, there are differences among regions. And now I want to describe how things look at within each region also. And that's important because that way we will know what is the variability between field to field. And the best way to explain is best way to explain field variability is through the box plot. And first I will describe what is box plot. And box plot in this one, uh, this is the 50% of the data contained within that box, 80% of that data contained within this bar, and 90% contained between these two dots. So you will see a few box plot in coming few slides. This is a box plot for six different regions that we have selected. But notice that I am explaining that data only for 2009, only one year. And we can have similar box plot for the other regions, but I chose to show as an example here only. And these are the six selected regions within that, uh, within the state. On the y-axis, I am showing the nitrogen use efficiencies that vary from zero to 2.5 pound. What is more striking here is that the variability, field to field variability explained through the box plot by looking within that box is much higher compared to the variability among regions. So it means that within one region, though they are very small, there is a huge variability in the nitrogen use efficiency. Now let us take a look on the irrigation amount applied and the variation between regions as well as the field to field variability within each region. And this box plot shows the irrigation amount applied on the y-axis. And we can clearly say that there is a huge variability of irrigation amount applied within one region. And depending on where your field is within that box, it can vary anywhere from uh, 5 inches to 30 inches. So we can see that there is a clearly huge variability in the amount of irrigation applied and nitrogen use efficiencies between field within the regions. And what is more important here that these regions are so small in nature and the soils are very homogeneous except Central Platte Valley and Northeast. So we still have these high variability. And what is the reason behind that high variability? Uh, there are two kind of factors involved behind that variability. First is manageable factor and another is a non-manageable factor. And non-manageable factor is climate and its interaction with the management practices. Those things we cannot change and those are non-manageable factor. And now I will explain the first manageable factor and that is uh, crop rotations. In these uh, in this slide I am showing three different graphs, one, two and three. And in all of these three graphs, there are two colors. Uh, one is uh, green, that is representing corn soy rotation. So means corn was grown after soybean. And this one is continuous corn, corn after corn. In the first graph, we are looking at the irrigated corn yield. And we can clearly see that uh, the green bar is well above the yellow bar. And that's uh, about six bushels increase with crop rotation. So it means that the crop rotation make a huge impact on the following year corn yield. Uh, if you have soybean compared to corn in previous year. Now let us take a look on the fertilizer nitrogen applied. We can see that the green bar is far below the continuous, continuous corn yellow bar. And uh, that is that difference is 23 pound nitrogen per acre. So it means farmers uh, who has used corn soy in rotation and uh, they have achieved high yield by applying less nitrogen fertilizer rate and what it, it translates into higher nitrogen use efficiencies which we can see from this chart that corn soy has higher nitrogen use efficiency compared to the continuous corn nitrogen use efficiencies. And uh, <clears throat> what is, uh, uh, what makes a rotation uh, imp improve the corn yield efficiency. There are several factors. One is the crop establishment and second is plant to plant variation and especially early on. And, and then also it depend on the nitrogen immobilization by previous corn residue. So there are several factors that can Im 
explain the impact of the rotation and result into better corn yield under corn soybean rotation compared to corn corn sequence. Uh, now I am talking about the second, manage, uh, second manageable factor that can help to decrease the field variability and that's the use of pivot irrigation system compared to surface applied irrigation system. Here we are looking in the south central region uh, data set and yellow bars are showing the pivot irrigation system and the green bars are showing the surface applied irrigation system. Here we are seeing that the yellow and green bars are almost equal in height. So it means the irrigated corn yield are same whether you have applied irrigation through surface or through the pivot irrigation system. But let us take a look on the amount of irrigation applied. In this graph we can clearly see that the green bar is well above the yellow bar and uh, th that means that uh, farmers have applied more irrigation water when they had surface irrigation system compared to pivot irrigation system. And uh, that resulted into higher water use efficiency for the pivot irrigation system that we can see from this graph. So we can increase 4 bushels per acre per inch water use efficiency if we have pivot irrigation system compared to the surface applied irrigation water system. With this I will conclude my presentation and uh, I will summarize few points and one of the conclusion we have noticed that farmers in Nebraska they are achieving 26 percent high corn yield efficiencies in irrigated field compared to the national average. And most importantly they are able to do it without sacrificing the use of nitrogen and nitrogen fertilizer and irrigation water use. We have also noticed that there is a huge variability in the fertilizer nitrogen and irrigation water use efficiencies across field even <coughs> those f across field within the same region even though those regions were quite small and homogeneous in nature. And uh, we can do that by adopting best management practices across fields. And the last is we can also improve the field to field variability by looking at field that have much lower irrigation and water use efficiencies compared to the average water and nitrogen use efficiency within that regions. Uh, these are the references we have used in this presentation. So somebody want to take a look they can go through these uh, references or can talk to us further. And this presentation and project has been uh, accomplished in partnership uh, and funded by Region 7 EPA 319 program and Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality. And uh, thank you so much for viewing this presentation.